the relationships that we have and the people that have that have um, made an impact on our lives and vice versa is actually the most important thing that we should celebrate. Overthinking each day and losing sleep Raised in sunny Singapore, Joel Tan, who goes by Gentle Bones, is one of the city state's top artists to have made waves across the globe. He has amassed over 50 million streams on Spotify, earning himself a spot in its top three most streamed Singapore artists in late 2019. And just recently, he has unveiled his final collaborator of the year to be none other than JJ Lin, one of Singapore's top artists. The collaboration track title, At Least I Had You, questions the sour existence in the world full of confusion and insecurities. So this song is a ray of hope, illuminating and unifying the hearts of all of us who may be going through some tough times. This track also marks JJ Lin's first English collaboration with a male Singapore artist, which speaks volumes as to the significance of this musical union. At Least I Had You is now available on all digital platforms, so go stream it on Spotify, Apple Music and YouTube. And Today, we have here a very special guest, which is Gentle Bones. Welcome to Radio Heatwave. Hello. Hello. Um, Hi, Radio Heatwave. <laughs> so, um, we are all super, super curious. So, how did this collaboration with JJ Lin come about? Oh, yeah. It first came about in my dreams. <laughs> really? Like, it, legit? Uh, I'm a big in fan of dreams. JJ's. And I think our management's actually, I mean, in reality, our management's linked up and then we managed to get a song out together. Wow. So how was it like to collaborate with someone you looked up for, especially him being in your dreams? <laughs> Man, uh, it was quite surreal, actually, you know. I think it's one thing to, to meet JJ or, like, watch him perform live. And it's another thing to, like, be in a studio with him and creating a song together. So that was quite surreal. Like, the whole time I was, like, looking at his face. <laughs> I only saw it on the screen or like in on stage, you know. So I actually heard that you guys hit it off really well. I had great chemistry and you've completed this song in under five hours. Like how was the songwriting process like when writing this particular song? It was actually pretty quick. Like he, he just came in like really quickly. So I was like just struggling to put it all down together. And I think it first started off with obviously me sending him a couple of like very vaguely written vibes and songs so that he could mm. choose like which one would be most suitable for Asla. So he chose this mm. one. So then how would you describe, you know, his style of making music versus uh, your style? Honestly, I'm not exaggerating. Like without him, I probably, I might not have been doing music today because oh, I actually wow. started very much so um, as a fan of his and mm. like, I didn't consciously realize it then, but then when I look back, like I realized like my first EP, a lot of its melodies actually were, were similar to his. So just going more into this song, right? So you shared that this song is about questioning our experience, our existence in a world full of confusion and insecurity. So what was the inspiration for writing this single? Yeah. So uh, that was a very well-written uh, summary of, of this song, but uh, I think at the end of the day, I think it's, we only can say so much with lyrics. So it's really up to the listeners to kind of decide what this song means to them. But I think mm -hmm. from our perspective, when we are writing it, I think it's also very much to do with the many changes and uncertainties that we're facing right now. JJ and I, you know, especially for him with the amount of accolades and achievements he's, he's achieved, we always face very two drastic polarities, right? Like one polarity being, um, like, let's say the more business, more, business aspects of it where you had to juggle different priorities and different perspectives and and, and, and also the, the many people that we work with and the fact that you know the, the whole reason why we got to where we are today is also because of like just a, a very intimate personal mm. pure emotion when we were in our room writing our first set of song so we're always mm. like traversing between these two extremes so sometimes we just question what we do music for i was actually listening to this song um on repeat it's actually on repeat right now and added to my playlist and there's this line that i really love the most you know celebrating you the most who the hell am i even when you're gone it's something that you know questions me and, and got me thinking i also wanted to ask you what is your favorite line in this song and why well i think the favorite line is this is 
I think the song starts off very well with what JJ is saying. Better to mm. be lonely, cooler to be empty. Mm. Wow. I thought that was a really good thing to, to pen down for a song for, for, for the listeners to hear. And not just not just that, I think like a realization for ourselves as well. Yeah, definitely. So um, with this being your, your first collaboration with JJ Lin amongst you know, the many collaborations that you've had, what is something that you've learned when writing and working with him? I mean, we all know how all, all his formidable skill sets and, and, and how much of a star he is. Um, like I said, I think he's influenced me long before that studio session. But I think like what I learned from him personally as a person is that he's very much like a He's, he's a very patient person and he's very, very perceptive. Um, yeah, and I think he, and, and he has a lot of respect to give to others. Wow. And also actually, um, you've also released Chinese songs before and JJ Lin as well. So um, can we look forward to a Chinese version of this song or maybe a brand new song that is uh, Chinese as well? Oh yeah, yeah. There's more Chinese music coming for sure. Um, <laughs> You know, for Great. Me, I'm, just, I'm just thanking God and mm. whoever I can thank for the fact that JJ would like to do a song. So mm. I'm good for now. Thank you. Yes, <laughs> awesome. And um, you've also released your full title debut album earlier last month. And it was actually your very first album in eight years. So what took you so long to release this album? Um, mostly like budget and timeline issues, to be frank. <laughs> mm. uh, it was always kind of managing budgets that I was working with, with from my label. And then mm. also I like create in the way that I consume. So usually mm. I, I, I don't, con- at that point in time where I think music was more tribalistic and more genre based, where we would like a specific genre, right? I think that was at least more for me like, during my time when I was probably mm. your age. And then it was more tribalistic. So it's like, okay, I'm a, I'm a punk kid or I'm an emo yeah. kid, or, you know? So then I would switch genres like, mm. like too quickly and then mm. I wouldn't be able to create uh, uh, an album and then the album that I'm creating is very much genreless I'm merely for the first time in my, my, my career I think I'm making music that just that, that I just let flow out and I feel like mm. as a consumer is missing out there for me so I'm really proud of that la. you said that you were bouncing between genres and now you are moving into a direction that it's more genreless. So where do you see yourself moving in terms of, you know, music direction and self-growth uh, other than just being uh, genreless? For me, the biggest realization that I've had over the years is that like, mm. I now see music more as a form of service as well, you know, mm-hmm. creating music for the audiences and have that be prioritized over what it could possibly bring for your own personal satisfaction. This also very much explains like the, the recent like more in the simplified terms like positive music that I've been trying to make. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And me also, I've been such an avid fan from of you from the start and, and you've been such a like a relatable musician and your music has become such an inspiration for all of us growing up in Singapore. So how do you feel about your impact in the musical scene in Singapore? I'm just glad to be a part of the journey, man. Like, I think I've been a huge fan of the music scene since I was a kid and that's the reason why I joined it. Yeah, it was back then, it was like a lot more like punk. Mm. It was like punk scene and it was like indie scene and I was more of a punk scene. So, you know, I've learned very much from, from all the, the comrades and acquaintances that I've made along the way. And I think we've come very, very far. You know, um, I would say like one act that really opened the door towards mainstream would be an act like Sam Willows. Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so if you could choose only one song to perform for the rest of your life, what song would it be? I would say like right Hard now, question. my favorite song is Better With You, <laughs> Benjamin King. Yes, I, I love it as well. <laughs> so actually, um, for me, I'm, I I met you a few years ago while, while, uh, while there was no COVID and you were performing at Gardens by the Bay and I was with a friend. And we, after the performance, uh, we waited for you and then you came out and then my friend had this... Um, she wanted to get your signature, but she had no pen. So she gave you her lipstick so that you could sign on a piece of paper. And it was such a memorable experience. And we can't wait to hear, you know, more live performances from you. So, you know, can we expect some live performances from you anytime soon? 
yeah, hopefully, you know, there, there have been a few that have come and passed, mm. fell through, you know, just waiting for the chance to perform live to a live audience, I think it's very important. Mm-hmm. Can't wait to do that, honestly. Yes, I also can't wait. So thank you so much for, for being here with Radio Heatwave. And for all of you out there who have not listened to the song, please go listen to it. It's such a banger. And it's something that really like makes me like be in the field. So go save it on Spotify, on um on Apple Music and on YouTube. Yes. So thank you, Joel, for being here. Overthink.